Will the focus on the Lone Star State switch to the Cowboy State? I think it will. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why I think Wyoming may be the next move to hotspot in the United States. Wyoming in the last three years or so, like since the beginning of COVID, has seen a serious jump in Google searches for real estate and Wyoming towns. In the last six months, it is the most Googled state. Over the last few census, Wyoming has been kind of hot and cold with their migration patterns or their growth, I should say. In 1990, they actually lost 3.4%. In 2000, they gained almost 9%. In 2010, they gained just over 14%. And then in the 2020 census, they only gained 2.3%. But that is deceiving. They gained a lot more people than that number looks like. Because during that time, Wyoming had a higher than average death rate and a lower than average birth rate. So a lot of their growth just came from people moving in. Now, I'm not saying a lot of people, you know, were catching a dirt nap early. They just had an older than average population. Now, that was a long explanation, but what it breaks down to is more and more people are realizing Wyoming is a pretty good option. And we're going to look at why in this video. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, natural beauty. Wyoming isn't just any state. It's like Mother Nature decided to show off a bit. Imagine stepping into a postcard where Grand Tetons and Yellowstone National Park flaunt their UNESCO World Heritage status like some sort of outdoor flex, tempting your sense with jaw-dropping vistas, bubbling geothermal spectacles, and natural icons that have earned legendary status. Easily one of the best states for outdoor lovers. But hold on to your cameras. That's not the end of it. Wyoming has the Red Desert that sprawls out as a grand state stage of the largest dune desert in the U.S., boasting a mind-boggling 9,000 square miles of sweeping panoramic red beauty. And if that wasn't it, you got the entire Jackson Hole area urging you to make more money so you could live there. So yeah, that's why a lot of people are packing their bags for Wyoming's nature show as some sort of mother nature box office hit. In my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion, the natural beauty of Wyoming blows Texas out of the water. Number nine, low population density. In the grand tapestry of American landscapes, Wyoming stands out as a serene patch of open sky, open land, and very few people. It's where vast stretches of untamed land seem to call to the socially awkward and aspiring hermits. This is the 10th largest state in the nation and the state with the lowest population all at the same time. Now, it's not just all this open land and stuff like that. Their cities hardly have anyone in them too. The most populated city is Cheyenne with only 65,000 people. Casper's got 58,000. Laramie's only got 31,000. They even got a small town called Chugwater with 175 people. So in Wyoming, there's no elbow jostling or waiting in endless lines, just you the open road, and perhaps a coyote or two as your neighbors. Many folks weary of the same old urban song and dance pack their bags and ask Siri for directions to Wyoming. And that's why a lot of people are starting to choose Wyoming instead of Texas. Texas, you know, it does still have some open land. I mean, they got a lot of it. It's a huge state, but their cities are pretty packed. Number eight, outdoor recreation. Wyoming, where the bison play their own version of hide and seek and the stars are more plentiful than tourists with selfie sticks. If you fancy yourself the outdoor aficionado, then this state is basically your Disneyland. Why you ask? Picture yourself hiking up a mountain with the enthusiasm of a toddler on a sugar and caffeine rush, only to see down it like you're auditioning for some slapstick comedy. You like fishing? They got plenty of streams, creeks, rivers, reservoirs, lakes, and ponds where you could play a life or death tug of war with a fish. A well, life or death for the fish, not for you. I think you're pretty safe. And they're really big in horse riding too. One girl that I know is from Wyoming. She said, you have to ride a horse in Wyoming. It's different. She also had a bumper sticker that said... Something to the effect of women and horses in Wyoming are 10% sassier or something like that. It was weird. You know, one thing I noticed about Wyoming, they call Montana big sky country. It's the same in Wyoming. Just the sky seems to go forever. And at night, it is amazing. The amount of stars because they have like no light pollution. You know, they don't have big cities. There's not street lights everywhere. So the sky has so many stars. It's like going to Vegas almost. Actually, it's nothing like going to Vegas, but I think it's prettier. I mean, I've never seen stars organized to where they actually, you know, are trying to advertise a strip club. 
Number seven, it's affordable. Once upon a time in the wild and wondrous plains of Wyoming, the state whispered a secret to both humans and corporations. Psst, I won't touch your income with taxes. This tempting offer left many a wallet and piggy banks heaving sighs of relief. But the benefits didn't stop there. Moving to Wyoming is like discovering a secret sale, where everything is tagged with a lower cost of living sticker. The state rolls out the red carpet for budding entrepreneurs with its business-friendly atmosphere and lenient regulations. If you work in energy or tourism, this state is screaming for you to move there. As for the retirees looking to swap out city hustle for serene sunsets, well, Wyoming's calm landscape beckons along with the sweet serenade of tax savings. So obviously the place is very affordable. That's what happens when you don't have a lot of people living there. If you don't know, Texas, their cost of living is going up. So is their housing. Same thing happened to any state that got popular. California at one point was pretty cheap. Then everyone started moving there and it got expensive. When nobody lives someplace or nobody wants to live someplace, it's very affordable. Wyoming's situation is people want to live there, they just don't yet. So head on out to Wyoming. They got a tax-free party just getting started. Number six, property rights. Ah, Wyoming, where the cows might outnumber the people and the Wild West spirit still roams free. Have you ever dreamt of owning vast stretches of land where you could perhaps stage your own Wild West show, complete with tumbleweeds and cowboy hats? Good news, Wyoming rolls out the red carpet for aspiring land barons, tipping its hat in respect to land owners' rights. They're big on land owners' rights. That's their thing. If you own land, that's your land. That's kind of one of those things that's sacred in Wyoming. The cool thing about Wyoming right now, you could buy large patches of land, acreage, and it's not going to set you back nearly as much as in, I don't know, 80% of the country. I was on my new favorite website, Where Might I Live? And I was looking at the different counties in Wyoming. Most, if not all, of their counties, their home ownership or land ownership is over 70%. 70% or over, I should say. Now, back east, that's kind of the average. Out west, it's a little bit different. Most counties are in the low 60s. It's a really cool website. They're not paying me to say this, but you should definitely check it out. There's a link for it down below. Number five, the safety. Ranking as the silver medalist in the least likely to commit murder Olympics right after those peace-loving New Englanders, you have Wyoming. Wyoming makes sure you sleep a tad more soundly at night. Statistically, Wyoming's murder rate is 4.5 per every 100,000 residents. The only state outside of New England that beats Wyoming is Oregon with 4.4. So why so much serenity, you ask? Well, it's all thanks to the state's towns and cities where everyone's basically two handshakes away from being cousins. It's like living in a big family barbecue, lots of neighborly love, and thankfully no family feuds leading to a cowboy standoff. It's not that many people, and like I always said, more people means more problems. Go to a city where people are living on top of each other, you got more people, there's going to be more problems. You live in a state where you go outside because you're angry and you're going to shoot the first car that comes by and nobody comes by for two days, you have a low murder rate. Number four, clean air and water. Wyoming isn't the best when it comes to either of these, but it's doing pretty good. They're ranked 12th in air quality and 13th in water quality. Texas, on the other hand, is ranked 48th in water quality and 37th in air quality. So they're definitely cleaner states, but Wyoming is pretty good when it comes to these things. And believe it or not, this is a big concern for a lot of people. They want to know what they're breathing in. Seeing that a lot of people that are moving to Wyoming are coming from states like Texas or California where the air quality and water quality is not great. This is definitely one in the plus column for Wyoming. Number three, cultural events. Well, folks, if you ever wondered where cowboys brush up on their dance moves, look no further than Cheyenne Frontier Days. This ain't your typical rodeo. It's like a flamboyant fiesta of Wyoming's wild and wooly, sometimes weird heritage with pancakes. But Frontier Days isn't the only cultural event going on in Wyoming. They have different events scattered throughout the state that'll teach things about Native Americans, pioneers who didn't have GPS, you know, the Old West, when Wi-Fi was just two cans and a piece of string. They have all kinds of music festivals like Yellowstone Songwriter Festival, whole bunch of beer fests, 
few more rodeos. There's a lot to do in Wyoming, and a lot of it centers around the Old West type lifestyle. There's this weird thing about Wyoming where they live that culture, but not, you know, they're not all wearing cowboy hats, chaps, and boots every day. Just the atmosphere, the aura, the mystique of this state. And a lot of it has to do with their cultural events. Number two, the education. Now, a lot of people will move to Wyoming for the education. They're ranked 14th in the nation for pre-K through 12, and they're ranked number five in the nation for higher education. They even got the University of Wyoming Cowboys and their unfortunate paint scheme, yellow and brown. Oddly enough, I've mentioned this before on this channel, those were the exact same colors I had in my high school, yellow and brown. We had this Old West cowboy theme going on, and my high school was about a half a mile from the beach in Southern California. Now, in this video, we've been talking about how people are starting to choose Wyoming over Texas as their next landing spot. These two states are very similar in a lot of ways. Education ain't one of them. They do have some great universities, don't get me wrong. The University of Texas at Arlington is one of my favorites. But Texas is ranked 37th in the nation for pre-K through 12 and 25th in the nation for higher education. That's 20 spots lower than Wyoming for higher education. So for people with kids that are looking for a good education for their kid, they're kind of, you know, trying to decide between Wyoming and Texas. Wyoming's going to be your better option. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There is a link for that down below. All the money for that channel goes to helping classrooms. So we donate all that money. All right, on to number one. And number one. The Second Amendment. If you like loud noises, you like the smell of gun oil and the Second Amendment, you'll love Wyoming. The Cowboy State isn't the most gun-friendly state, but it's up there. It's usually around the top 10, depending on what study you look at. Where they really bubble to the top is when it comes to the percentage of households that own firearms. The national average is around 47% of homes in any state would own firearms. Wyoming comes in number two, right behind Montana, with... 66.2% of homes owning firearms. Montana's just barely over that with 66.3%. Texas is around 45%. Bunch of slackers, if you ask me. So there's the 10 reasons I think Wyoming is going to be the next hotspot and kind of take away some of the traffic from Texas. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Be nice to each other.